Hi guys, I am Vitold and if you are interested in the newest 2022 Honda Africa Twin 1100 and particularly consider it with a DCT, so dual clutch transmission, which is an automatic transmission, I will give you top seven reasons to buy it. There is also a video of top reasons why you might want to avoid this bike. So please make sure that you watch that one to get the other perspective as well. I think it is actually important as you really can make a big mistake here. But let's dig into what makes this bike a really interesting offering on the market in the segment of big adventure motorcycles. So the first and in my opinion the most important reason is that it's got tech that no other bike in this segment has. Being unique here means that Africa Twin is your only choice if you care for those certain and specific things. And I mean specifically the DCT automatic transmission that actually works really well. If you're too big for a scooter and still want to ride in elegant shoes, Guys, this option is for you. Note that not every Honda Africa Twin 1100 comes with DCT, but this is an option both for the regular version of the Africa and also for the version with a larger fuel tank. So the one that I spent time with, it's called Adventure Sports. And also there is a possibility of adding the semi-active adjustable suspension to only this Adventure Sports version. The transmission works in a fantastic way. It's unbelievably smooth. It behaves in an expectable and safe way, which makes it a trustworthy partner in riding the Africa. If you want to have it just to make things easier for yourself, in the long run, it is, I think, possible. In the short run, it can make things much more complicated. There are certain modes that make the bike behave very differently and some will suit you and some will definitely not. By default, the regular D mode is slow as hell and not very useful because of that. But if you switch to one of the three sport modes, it can be fun and enjoyable. There's also an option of locking the bike's brain out of the decision-making process and taking full control over when the gears are being changed and to what exactly gears. So getting into a manual mode and using two paddle shifters or rather, in fact, two buttons on the left-hand side of the handlebar, you may also add an extra lever that goes into the place of the traditional gear change lever and use this instead of consistently having your two fingers over the buttons. And I know I would go actually for that solution 100% myself. The downshift button is, you know, right next to an indicator switch and a horn. And that causes, well, certain issues, let's call them that way. Especially if you're not very focused on perfectly using the setup and you don't check what you press exactly every time. So this is if you want to get the most out of it and play with different modes and different ways of using it. You've got all those options there. If you agree for some limitations here, you can be very happy with it overall. All systems cooperate generally really well, also with traction control to keep you safe. So really, there's no reason to not believe in this particular technology in this motorcycle. Unless you do something that you shouldn't do, like rev the bike and suddenly shoot it through an intersection accidentally, or trying to save yourself by grabbing a clutch that's actually not there. The lever that you see is a parking brake, which is moved so far back so that you cannot reach it, at least not easily having your hand on the handlebar. Adjustable suspension and the changes of stiffness may be a nice touch and there are some useful options as well, like a quick shifter if you're not interested in the DCT transmission. The bike also has an LED light and there's an option of it being a cornering light. Apart from this, you get cruise control, cornering ABS, you get the traction control, you get those different riding modes that are noticeably different and you may get heated grips. The second reason that I believe may also be the second strongest point of the bike is the legend of the model. The name of Africa Twin has a certain connotation, a certain vibe in the world of adventure motorcycles and it has earned it years ago. Honda now keeps improving the current Africa Twin 1100. Now it's 1100, it used to be 1000 not long ago and they seem to be doing a pretty good job at that guys. 
The design isn't really changing that much, or even maybe at all, except for a windshield. But at this stage, the bike feels like a very much mature and finished product. And it is the only serious adventure in Honda's lineup, so it's naturally important to them. And I was very excited to try the Africa. I don't ride off-road much at all anymore, at least. Definitely not on big adventure bikes, that's the case here. So it turned out that in the style of ownership or in the style of use, I simply had to be a little bit disappointed with the overall balancing experience and precision, for example, in city riding. But it's just not where the bike was engineered to be, clearly. And I believe it only makes sense outside of the city to ride this bike, since it turns quite well, in fact, at speed. It's actually surprisingly good. And also, it makes sense to take it off-road. If you want to um, have a legend today, this is your chance. It's not cheap at all, but it's a real Africa twin, I think. All right, so now the third reason that I think contributes quite well to the idea of having an Africa twin is that it can look really cool and stylish especially in this multi-color scheme that this adventure sports is in it grows attention it doesn't look weird at the same time like Japanese bikes sometimes can it is huge and with those big wheels and enormous dash area and all that around it it all can be impressive and I think that it can successfully resemble the first Honda Africa twin that can still even today be really cool looking motorcycle. And look at the details, like the ring knights, look at the hand guards, look at the crash bars, the Honda logos in certain places, the fantastic looking golden cross spoke wheels. I like it myself. And I think that it's got its own style. So it's definitely worth considering if that's what's also important to you guys. Now in the fourth point, if you are skilled, big and strong, you may use it off the road and again, the big 21 inch front rim, the unusually big 18 inch rear rim, the large 25 centimeter ground clearance, the very wide handlebar, overall tough construction, at least it feels tough, that it gives a feeling of that, you know, solid motorcycle. All that shows that it can go off the road. On top of that, you can help yourself by installing those crash bars, like even, even more of them, and you can use all of its wheels travel, that is 23 centimeters in the front end, 22 in the back. The bike's electronics allow you to switch ABS off as well, the suspension is soft in the first stage of compression, not very much, but then becomes pretty stiff. It's not the best combination for riding in the city, but it's pretty fine on a highway and also for off-roading, which this part is about. And I believe that there may be better choices, actually even better choices for off-roading. But if you want to have an over 1000cc bike, I think you will do quite fine with Africa, even though it's feeling pretty heavy, but it's there. And now fifth reason comes into play if you are looking for a Japanese adventure motorcycle that will likely be reliable, as then you don't have many other options. And naturally this makes Honda Africa Twin one, if not the only one reasonable choice. Yamaha is having their Tenere 700, which is much weaker, much lighter, and is below 1000cc. Suzuki has a very street oriented and touring oriented V-Strom 1050 and Kawasaki has nothing except for a purely street oriented versus 1000. Japanese bikes can be about reliability and the kind of trust that comes along with them. Africa Twin looks and feels solid. It clearly speaks out about its manufacturer really paying a lot of attention to it. And except for a likely not very well designed dash that pops up a message every time you start the bike and takes ages to get rid of. Aside from that, I haven't really found any clear engineering or design mistakes. And that's a big thing. Perhaps they could have made the windshield adjustment system easier to use instead of requiring two hands to move the windshield up and down. Now, the sixth reason might sound a little bit weird to you at first, but also let me explain so here comes the statement. If you are a Mercedes-Benz fan, which right next to Tesla puts touch screens everywhere, then you will feel like at home with Africa Twin. And this is because Africa Twin has a display that also can be used via touch. So not only is it one of very few, or maybe even, maybe even the only one motorcycle in the category to give you a way to simplify 
using the otherwise amazingly counterintuitive screen and buttons, but also lets you still do everything in a traditional way with its 774 switches and buttons around the handlebar in different places. So the choice is yours. And as you see, it even beats modern cars that are too cheap nowadays to give you any kind of physical experience with buttons and switches. And you've got them here in the touchscreen. Props to Honda for that. So Honda's decision makers have actually outdone themselves, I think. And this further shows that their you know, big dedication to this model. All right, now it's staying with Mercedes-Benz topic. There is one more thing in common with Mercedes-Benz brand. Very noble this time, and I liked it a lot myself. It's the sound of the exhaust. If you are getting an Africa Twin with an automatic gearbox, because that may matter here, the way it changes gears and the muffler reacting to those changes of gears with sound is amazing. It basically sounds like any of Mercedes 63 AMG models. So for example, a G-Wagon, E-Class, CLS, or even AMG GT ones. freaking awesome this bike with this automatic gearbox does crazy things with sound and to me that was a huge 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 part of enjoying the ride on it and i would say that perhaps maybe even the biggest selling point of the bike for me personally i like the whole experience of an automatic gearbox itself i wouldn't miss it much actually, if it wasn't for the sound. Now, considering the sound, it makes it a lot better. So if you are looking for reasons to buy Honda Africa Twin and this convinces you, then I'm glad that I could be of help. You know, buying a bike is a very emotional process and, and a big decision. So I would also actually suggest that you probably should also see the video about what is not so great in this bike to ensure that you make an absolutely correct and the right choice for yourselves. I feel that you've got to be a very specific rider who rides in specific certain conditions often enough to benefit from what Africa has to offer. Anyway, that's it from me. Bye.